Turret Manual, a story by user, operation technician. The problem with being a famous warship is that your fame extends to the enemy. The problem with having a white gold paint job on your famous battleship is that you stand out like a bar of platinum at a coal sale. The problem with having a non-standard engine on your famous white gold battleship is that your sensor profile practically screams shoot me to every enemy in the system. The other two battleships in the Royal Fleet had standard, powerful VZAL-90 AAGH engines. They were impressive enough, a requirement for any torch designed to push a kilometer-long war machine. Their steady, comforting glow of plumes were also completely dwarfed by the frantically maneuvering disco ball of gold and white between them. The two battleships cruised forward, bombarding with deadly precision, while their gleaming third evaded like a loose hose. Its sputtering Type 5 Zeta DD Decel frigate maneuvering thruster spitting patterns of glowing exhaust in every direction. The two normal battleships didn't have to evade, because no one was shooting them. The enemy blob didn't give a shit about them. Instead, the hostile formation was saturating the area between them with all manner of beams and munitions, laying into the frantic looking battleship escapade. Escapade had become the deadliest disco ball in the history of Royal Fleet parties much more so for the gunball someone once put up for a particularly large and drunken party a few years back. The stream of enemy slugs, lasers, missiles, and particle beams deflected off Escapade's spotty shields in every direction, occasionally striking friendly shields and hulls. During a moment of free flight, Greg suddenly realized why the Escapade's primary turrets were built in such an over-engineered fashion. As he flew into a hatchway and sailed forward, the thrust cut out, and the hallway around him rotated a full 180 degrees. The ceiling was suddenly the floor, and clearly wanted to prove itself as such by drawing in and smacking the two-meter spider-like shell and into it with the full might of the Type 5 Zeta's thrust. This happened in all of five seconds, and Greg could only imagine how fast the primary turret had to move to continue firing under the maneuver. Greg took a deep breath, shook himself, grabbed the sledgehammer he had been carrying with his forearms, and kept running. The gunners were glad to see Greg which was not a natural reaction to seeing a two-meter-long, horrifying bloody spider with an equally massive sledgehammer charging at you. All hail the machine, roared Greg as he crashed into the engineering compartment. And bless its mechanical soul. Greg swung, striking the bent power conduit with the hammer. The meter-thick pipe took the hit in stride, bending in and replying with an ear-splitting ringing. Greg ignored it and drew for another strike. All hail the void of space. And the spaghetti monster and the Kraken, to whom we owe our continued existence. The conduit sparked, screeched, and roared as renewed power flowed through it. Somewhere down its length, a turret groaned to life. Holy shit, said one of the gunners, his purpose in life back in action and firing. Greg fell onto his torso, dropping the hammer and bowing to the conduit. Thank you. The sledgehammer was back in his claws, and Greg was out of the compartment. Dispatch already had an assignment for him. Deck 50, Array 3. Deck 50 was high up. That meant he was far away from the center of mass. That in turn meant that Greg felt as if he were an assault shaker, as he scaled the shaft 500 meters up to the battleship's nose. Every maneuver sent him into one wall or another, with increasing strength as his distance from the safe decks increased. The third array was struck. It had retracted into the hull as that side of the ship faced the enemy, and now refused to extend. Greg knew what he had to do. He stuck the handle of his sledgehammer into the gears, inserted it into the dented mechanism, and called the bridge. I need maximum 30 degree rotation at half acceleration, he roared at the pilot. The pilot didn't answer. Instead, one of the walls was suddenly the floor. Greg held onto the business end of his tool for dear life, using it as a lever to pry free the dented gears. Something snapped and groaned, and the array rammed free, extending into space. Greg pulled out a fire extinguisher-sized can of WD-40 and poured half a liter of the toxic stuff into the system. Primary one, ordered dispatch with relentless efficient tact. Going back down the shaft was a bit easier. The walls beat on Greg like four bullies with steel fists. But the spastic upward acceleration of the main engine pulled the spider down with a grim determination. Primary one was the first of Escapade's four primary turrets. It was, like much of Escapade, non-standard. It could swing in every direction, not just forward. An exercise that looked absurd when scaled up to the primary size. 
The primary wasn't moving, and neither was it firing. A dozen or so concerned Shellen and Wreck were crowded around the walkway, overlooking the turret's mechanism. Three of the Shellen were furiously praying, while the rest tried to slither into the primary's innards in an effort to locate the problem. Greg knew Primary 1 well, not because he was trained to operate it in the Academy. Guns like this simply didn't exist anywhere in the Royal Navy, except aboard the Escapade. Greg knew this particular beast of a weapon well, because this is where he had lunch every day. For weeks now, he had been enchanted with the horrific design, with its hacked-together guidance systems and retrofitted servos. He knew Primary 1 just as well as he knew the Escapade's engine. It was still a mystery, but less so to him than to most everyone else in the Royal Navy. Greg also knew what this turret liked, and what it didn't. Get back! He smacked the other engineers and gunners back. He grabbed a struggling shell in by the rear legs and flung it out of the gun's inner hatch. Idiots! One of the wreck was the chief engineer. The squid creature caught the flying shell in and dragged it back without argument. No one was about to argue with a specialist. Come on, whispered Greg as he ran around the turret, looking into and shutting the hatches. The damage wasn't internal. The turret was alive. It just couldn't move. What's wrong? What's stuck? Can't spin, whispered the primary. Hurts to move. Greg ran to the outer ring and looked into the gears. There, set neatly inside four system blocks at once, was an enemy slug. The creature was eating away at the systems, boiling away steel and processors. It hissed at Greg as he looked into the compartment. Greg was enraged. To everyone's shock, he drew back his oversized hammer and began to bash in the ruined system blocks. Their shock turned to anger when they saw the burning sludge on the hammerhead. Having committed his first murder in the line of duty, Greg dropped the ruined sledgehammer and ran back to the gun. Better? he whispered. The others didn't hear his words. They reflexively bowed and began to pray, assuming that's what he was doing. Hurts, whispered back Primary One. I know, said Greg. I hurt too. That's good because it means we're still alive. Need to keep fighting if we want to survive, though. I'll fix you afterwards. Who will fix your pain later? Wondered the turret with another whisper. There are shell and fixers that will do that. But I'll fix you first. Just stay strong, okay? Okay, whispered back the turret. Greg jumped back as Primary One roared to life. The engineers and gunners cheered as it swung into position and shook with rage, spitting a bolt of electrons into the enemy outside. Idiots! Greg smacked the nearest engineer. You can't just crawl inside of it, it doesn't like that! Another engineer locked himself in place with six legs, and carefully opened a binder that he had been holding. He scratched something out, added a few words, and handed the binder over. Greg read over the new instructions, added a few words, and slammed it shut. He ran his claw over the letters of the cover, and handed the M-Type Point Defense Grid Fire Battery Element Manual back to his underling. You've got to have respect for this human machinery, he instructed, and the other shell nodded in understanding. You've got to be kind to them, he thought to himself, and skittered off. There was always more work to do. If you're new here, welcome aboard. Check out the description for the story, and join the Discord if you like. Consider supporting the channel and the author as well. It's a dangerous world out there, but remember to be brave and look up to seek the stars. Thank you.